To succeed as a chef, you have to be an entrepreneur and an inventor in equal parts. While some diners may prefer to stick to tried and trusted dishes, others will expect a chef to surprise and delight them with fresh ideas and flavours. Chef Sheldon Raju has built his personal brand on his flair for reinventing Eastern heritage cuisine. Let's join Sheldon on the Spice Trail. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, we at my very special friend's house, Michael Chandler, fantastic artist in the country. Uh, he's recently helped me on a competition that I did, a young chef's competition where I represented Africa and we competed in Dubai. Uh, I recently did play second and uh, I just thought it would be a great idea to share some of these little like tips and bits that I used in my dish and just a little home friendly version of the whole completed journey which I took, uh, which is entitled On the Spice Route. Uh, but enough about that, it's time to get back into the kitchen and let's get started. Michael is a designer with a portfolio covering everything from soft furnishings to ceramics and furniture. Not to mention his distinctive pen and ink work, which was used to striking effect for Sheldon's competition entry. Every time I'm out in public, it's always people asking, please can you teach me to make my own paneer? And it's very simple actually. All you need is a litre of milk, 100 ml of lemon juice, and some really cool fine muslin cloth. You can pick this up at any tailor or wherever. You're gonna heat up your milk till about 100 degrees. I'm gonna to talk to you about my chutney. Now, the chutney that I used for this competition, I entitled Shukran, which from Arabic to English translation literally means thank you. Uh, without Arab influence in India, the Khyber Pass or Silk Roots wouldn't have opened up. And that free trade that was really secure and safe wouldn't have allowed the diversity of ingredients to spread worldwide. But let me get started. I'm gonna to toss my onions into the pan and then slowly bring it up to temperature. Just slowly sweating it until it's almost brown in color. You can start this off by heating your oil up. I'm just gonna start mine off here so you all can have a look. My ginger and garlic, about two tablespoons here. In goes next uh, my hard spices. In goes some of my curry leaves. I'm just gonna slowly sweat them on the stove. Oh well, fantastic, my milk is almost done. It's heated up, I'm gonna put it on the side here. And then I got a bit of hot oil here that I've pre-fried my onions with. I'm just gonna add this in so it gently starts. My base is on the go there. My onions, I'll let them gently sweat away. My milk is ready now, and into that I'm gonna add my lemon juice. I'll have a look at this beautiful chemical reaction here. Oh wow, so he's ready now. Beautiful and silky. I'm gonna strain him into my muslin now. Gently fold over the muslin and then just pop some weights on it and put it one side. And that's ready. Okay, great, let's see how this is doing. Oh, this is coming out perfectly. Gently, the onions translucent. All those flavors and spices lifting out of the pot. All right, I'm, uh, I'm ready for my sultanas and my Auntie Ma's masala. Now that my spices are in, I'm just gonna let them roast for a bit. Let out that fantastic aroma, flavor that it's been hiding. To that, just a touch of hot water I add to the side of mine, just so my spices don't burn. Drop the temperature down to a very, very gentle low simmer, and then I'm gonna carry on with my aubergines on the side. I'm gonna slice them into nice little big pieces, and then just shallow fry it for a bit. Uh, to, I like shallow frying my aubergines, because it's almost like cooking a bit of meat. It's beautiful and like chewy. It just adds that more dimension. So while I'm shallow frying here, I'm just gonna constantly keep on tossing the aubergines till they're beautifully golden brown and evenly cooked. Just moving them around in this heat. Oh wow, these look great, golden brown. And I'm gently gonna lift them up and then pop them into my onions. I'm just gonna pop in some of my tomatoes that have been blitzed up. A Little bit of my coconut milk as well. Okay, my lid's on there. My chutney's gonna go for roughly about 20 minutes with the lid on. Then I'm gonna let it off and get it nice and thick. But uh, more importantly, I'm gonna just have a quick glance at my vegetables that I have for this, which is some fantastic seasonal vegetables. Blanching is very simple. All it involves in maintaining nutrition in your vegetables, which most of us people at home don't do. So this is a French technique that just ensures that you rapidly cook your vegetables in boiling water for brief minutes until it's almost al dente, and then you cool it down in lots of ice water so you stop that cooking process. So it still maintains its beautiful crunch. 
Next up for my amadumbi, this Zulu potato has become synonymous with our cultures as a little snack before drinks for the elderly men. One of my favorites from my childhood, just to have it lightly boiled and dipped in salt, I thought about redefining it. So I peeled it, lightly sliced it very thin on my mandolin, and then I fried it until it's a beautiful, crispy, golden brown. Now just thinly slice them. I work really quickly so it doesn't discolor. You wanna get it nice and paper thin so it gets really crispy. Next, I'm gonna get back to my blanching and then just finish off my broccoli stems. So let's go again, give it a little stir. Your water nice, rapidly boiling and a little bit salty as well so it penetrates, remember those vegetables. Those are ready. I'm gonna pop them quickly into my ice water. Same thing I'm doing over here with my snow peas. And then gently just pick out the bits, pop them in these beautiful bowls. I love eating raw vegetables. Probably one of my favorite things is crudite. Again, I use my super sharp mandolin and I thinly slice them. Over here, you can look, I've got some really crazy bits. These are just baby fennel. And it just adds so much character to your plate as well as flavor. Last bit of carrots here, move these vegetables up. I'm gonna start frying my amadumbis and getting them nice and crispy. These are ready. I'm just gonna pop them out. Oh wow, my chutney is done as well. I got a bit of a stir here. Oh, it's looking great, smelling fantastic guys. And I'm gonna give it a quick little blend so it's easier for me to plate up. So it's now nicely done and we're ready to plate. And a little sprinkle of almonds. And then finally, we're just ready for some of that paneer that we did earlier. Again, I like mine soft, so I'm just gonna lightly crumble mine over here. I'm just gonna talk really quickly about my pickle. What I did was just thin ribbons of courgettes, again sliced on the mandolin, and I charred them on a griddle pan. I used sugarcane vinegar and a little bit of chili and mint then to add to my pickling liquid. Oh, that's looking beautiful, just like how I remembered it from the competition. Okay. Mike, I'm ready for you. You ready to come have a taste? So Mike, uh, we ready here, yeah? but uh, do you just want to talk a little bit about the map quickly before I, I show you my little hidden sure. secret? So the thing that I really loved about this meal was that so many ingredients came from different parts of the world. It's a real celebration of all the way the different countries come together with the ingredients. You've got the Americas, North and South, you've got Europe, you've got Asia, and you've got Africa too. So well, the best way to kind of show that off was if we did a map of the world, and then I would draw the, the ingredients in the original form, which then I would hand color so that it really stood out. And essentially you could see exactly um, where all the different things came from for this meal. Oh, thanks Michael, and it definitely gave me an edge over my other competitors. I really appreciate it. But I just want to show you another little secret. So in Hindu culture, the coconut was always reserved as the universe and sacred in functions. It's fruit only offered to a gods. And this gave me a little edge actually in the competition when I wowed the judges by creating that same illusion of the coconut being the world. There was actually some engineering guys, when they saw me do it, they were like, how did the chef manage to do this? <laughs> like, <laughs> How did you do that? Well, you know, Mike, sometimes uh, you gotta keep some of your secrets to yourself, hey? All that's left to do now is just to tuck in. Uh, you can enjoy it. I can't wait. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. And, and thanks for you guys as well for joining me, just learning a bit about my adventures and my travels and this amazing competition that I took part in. Mm -hmm.